Hello everybody, today is Valentine's Day and I just found a yeah, interesting text from Ra Uruhu. Um, it is from the Rave Cosmology series, Mystic Monologues, and I will just read some part of it. Um, it's called The Opening of the Mating Season. And we will start with the chapter, The Wheel is a Calendar. The thing that makes the wheel so interesting, and of course we're speaking about the rave mandala, is the wheel is a calendar, after all. I didn't want to compress this image too much, so my writing of winter up there and summer down here didn't get into the illustration, but anyway, we're looking at a calendar. Uh, by the way, I tried to recreate this photo for you and put it here in the, in the video. If you look at the Valentine's Day, and I want to begin with Valentine's Day because I think this is uh, the initial marker for the opening of the most ancient mating season that we have as a species. And what is interesting about it is that as many of these dates are, because everything about human design is that truly enriches your understanding, is when you bring duality to everything that you see, you see everything within the lens of the binary. These dates traditionally are not simply cusps within lines, but they tend to to regularly be cusps between hexagrams themselves. And here is a classic example. Let us look at the beginning of the traditional mating season. And of course, we are in a quarter of initiation. And in that sense, this is really the place where this whole process has its root. If we could go back into the most ancient of our species, I can tell you that on this particular time in the wheel, they got horny. It was just a mechanism built into them and it's still in us. It's still in us. The difference is that it's not the only one that is our mutation, and I'll talk about that later, the mutation that we are sexually accessible at any given time, that this is part of the seven centered homogenized. I'll get to that. Valentine's Day, the 49.6 or the 31. By the way, this year it's 31, because today we're in the gate 31st line. But I want to start with this key because I want you to see how incredible just the information, it's just the theme of it. You've got two options for Valentine's Day. You're going to have the 49.6 or you're going to have the 30, the first line. Now, the 49.6, of course, we know the nature of the 49th gate. The nature of the 49th gate is that it is tribal. It is the gate that is the gate of marriage and divorce. It is the gate of the principles of the tribe. It is the one that decides who is going to be allowed at the table or not. And it is the one that the 19 seeks out with its flirtation in order to be able to find that partner that it is going to be able to have a successful relationship with. When we look at the 49.6, the line is attraction. The language is the power of revolution in action to expand support. But the thing to recognize about this is that this is one of the deepest attractive mechanisms that we have. Now think about initiation as a quarter. A commentary from my side, yes, we are in the initiation quarter right now the first quarter this year, and that's why it's initiation as a quarter. Uh, now think about initiation as a quarter and think about it in relationship to its, its deepest reference point, which is mind. For us, this takes an enormous importance because in our ability to be able to understand the homogenized world, that is, to be able to understand the not-self, to recognize that this very, very deep, deep urge within us is the first revolution. The thing that is going to change everything is this bonding system and the bonding system rooted in this deep tribal attraction and the attraction that this is fundamental for the 49 and together with the 19 the needs the resources are there and of course everything about bonding has nothing to do with love and everything to do with procreation and you can see that when we will get to the place where the mating season flowers which is in the case which is in this case the 37th gate what we get to see is that if we follow this inner track for nine months, we get to the birth of the manifesting generator and inherent ingredient in integration. The first true survival beings, pure survival beings, and this is the trajectory to bring them into the world. It's interesting, by the way, <clears throat> that we are moving towards 2027, where, of course, the global thematic is going to be oriented to the 2034, because... That's what's going to lie behind the 55, 59 and the cross of the sleeping phoenix. So here, on one hand, we have this incredible attraction that is the driving mechanism. And then we have the 30. Oh, I love the 30th gate. It's delicious. You get to the 30th gate and you get to the first line of the 30th gate. And it's 
got to make you just weep with laughter because the program is so perfect. It says composure, composure in the face of disorder. Two kinds of mating. We have two kinds of mating. One is the 49. The 49 susses everything out, checks out who is going to be the right kind of partner. Are they going to be obedient? Are they going to be, are they going to obey? Are they going to love, honor and all of that stuff? And the other side is the 30th gate. And the 30th gate says, oh, oh, because this is love you bang into. This is love that comes out of nowhere. And when I say love, it's another kind of attraction. And it's the attraction that brings disorder into your process. And you know, this is spring. We call it spring fever. That's a very common expression in English. Everybody gets randy, spring fever. Oh, I have an amused muse tonight, I must say. But anyway, I just love this binary because if you think about bonding, it really is one or the other. It's either that person that you've had your eye on because they're making sure that you notice them or it is that thing that just happens to you out of nowhere. And both of them are triggers. These are the most ancient triggers that we have for bonding. And of course, when you look up these four gates that are making up this particular unit, they are all emotional, all of them, pleasure, sex, pain, the human experimental way, the great journey of this life. And you can't make it without the other and you can't make it without making more. And here is the urge. Here is the drive. When you see the build up this way and then you take the next step and you go to the 55, what you're really getting to see is that you're seeing all the elements that make up the fundamental aspect of our sexuality. All of them, the need, the passion of the 55 or not, the desire of the 30. Oh boy, is that heat ever turned on? This is the hottest place in the wheel. Hot, 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 hot. And this rhythm of the sun. Oh boy, we are ever in the thrall of the sun, heating it all up. This is at the root of how we are driven physically by the program and what does it lead to? It leads to family. It leads to the whole construct. And you can see that in the beginning it is fundamentally tribal. It is tribal in its root and it is tribal when you get to the end of it because the end of that is all right. Let's make the bargain because that's what the 37 says. It looks out to the 40 and it says, hey, come on, let's make the bargain. Are you going to marry me? Are you going to love me? Let's make a deal. Let's make the deal now. And if you follow that calendar, because that's really what you're looking at, and you can see that I have placed indications here of date. So for example, this would be the 1st of March, and here we have the 1st of April, and here we have the 1st of May, just relative to the hexagram itself. So you have a sense of the movement in time. It's a stepped process. And in stages beginning here, in whichever way it's going to work in that particular cycle, because after all, they're going to be different from year to year, Here's the driving mechanism that sets us on this road so that by the time we get to the beginning of March, we're ready to make our bond. Of course, this was one of the things that was very significant in going back in, hi in our history, particularly going back in 7th century history. That is, you couldn't afford to spend time looking for a partner or a mate. When planting season was upon you and you had to work the fields and you did whatever you had to do, what you were looking for was getting these things resolved. There were a lot of festivals that would show up in this kind of time frame in order to be able to get people together, to get them settled into their life together and go out and go to work because after all, they had to survive and start their process. The first drive is tribal. So this whole season is one in which all of us have to be aware because then you see it around. And of course, what it's really saying is that we have cycles within the nature of the sun going through the wheel where we are drawn to what are already our partners or drawn to new connections. And that happens to us in a pattern over the course of the year and basically it's going to happen four times a year. This is where the peak is going to be and the true peak is here in this polarity that I have illustrated for you because this is where the true peak of this process is really about. So here you have the root. Of course, one of the things that we know about the nature of initiation is that when we're looking at quarters, for me, the oppositions are so powerful. I'm so drawn to my work with notes and originally for so long my work with the sun earth, how phenomenal these mirrors are in the beauty of the wheel because they are really extraordinary in that sense. And what we're looking at is that when we get to the other side, we're dealing with duality. In other words, this is where we have literally the second cycle that begins in that sense. And what we're looking at is very, very different a very different kind of program that has very different kinds of results. In other words, the rules of engagement change. They change. It's interesting to see the way in which the process itself evolves. This is the first drive. 
it's got to be tribal. It has to be tribal. Otherwise, we don't make it. Otherwise, we don't get to where we are. It just doesn't happen. And so, this build-up that is here, this is one of the main driving forces in our lives. It is one of the purest zones in which fertility takes place. By the time you get to the 37th gate, between the, between the 37th gate and the 22nd gate, this is the area where the results of the bonding are supposed to begin to take hold so that the life can reincarnate, that it can enter into the world and in entering into the world go through the whole process that we have in going around the wheel. Howler monkeys. The howler monkey, an interesting digression. I was always fascinated by the howler. It's a very strange creature. They're very aggressive. I guess my fascination with them is that they seem to being way similar to the Peter rate if I use for humans, which is killer monkeys, the howler has an interesting trait. As the packs mature, young males are ostracized from the pack. There are lead males and males that are bonded to specific females and the older males don't want to be threatened by the younger males. So the mechanism is that they are always throwing the younger males out. Now, of course, as an evolutionary process, that's about expanding the territorial domain of any bloodline, but nonetheless, the males that are exiled they eventually become very aggressive. That is, they become aggressive when their particular mating drive is heightened. What they do is that they will attack the grouping, not necessarily that they were ex exiled from, but they will attack any grouping in order to get at the females. And they're vicious in that, by the way. They can and do often kill other males, run all of them off. What's interesting in this situation is that the howler female has evolved being able to fake sexual interest even if they are pregnant. Now, even that they're pregnant is probably one of the main things about it. That is, if they refuse to couple, they would be killed or they would be ostracized and their young would not survive. So they actually evolved a system of pretending, we could get into all kinds of interesting areas of this and humor, by the way, but it's something to understand about the nature of human aggressiveness and how the human aggressiveness towards the female is still an extraordinary problem on this plane. Rape, which is one of the ugliest of violent crimes, is something that is epidemic in its levels and is rarely, 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 rarely truly dealt with. There are societies where you don't even want to think about being born a female in many places on this planet. So one of the things that is interesting about the extended sexuality is that my assumption is that the extension of human sexuality beyond actual mating seasons is a defense mechanism evolved through females in order to survive. I'm convinced of it. I'm convinced that it is an evolutionary trait that goes very, very far back, obviously, into the history of the species. Aggression in the movement of the 49 to the 37. But anyway, the violence is something that so much of the aggression is focused here on this movement of the 49 to the 37. This can be very, very aggressive. And again, it's been ameliorated by the civilizations that we live in and the rules that we have so forth and so on. And I don't want to take it out of proportion either, but. I think it's very important to understand that these gays have the quality to them. And that and that when the sun is roaming through here, it would be very interesting to see statistics, wouldn't it? To be able to measure statistics of violent sexual crime taking place during the mating season, because in fact, again, you'd have to prove me wrong, because I'm convinced that we would see very, very high disproportionate figures for at least what is reported, let alone what actually goes on. So... That's the dark side of that, but one that needs to be expressed. The quarter of duality, the four, six. When we move to the other side, and again, in moving to duality, obviously we're moving to a fundamental theme. And one of the interesting things is that you're going to begin with the four, six, or you're going to have the 29, one. And of course, if you're dealing with the four, six, you begin with uh, dealing with the fours. You can see right away that something has shifted here. This is a real shift because what you're looking at is an ashna aspect and you're looking at a logical ashna aspect and you're looking at the aspect and when you see it within the sixth line, the sixth line is excess. Again, these are about drives that are deep within us. Repeated and conscious abuse of norms will not escape a discipline. There are a lot of reasons rationalized and thought up about why one bonds with somebody else. This is one of the areas that is a mirror of the 49 and I'm showing you the dark side of these gays, really the dark side of them. And I know them well. I'm a 49-4. I know both of them. The dark side of that four is the power of a bond and the power in a bond to control the other. It is really something to understand about the bond giving an excuse to excess. In other words, 
that you can beat your wife or beat your children, whatever the case may be. Again, I don't want that to be the focus of this, but to make you through such a thing just to show you the mechanism, you need to see the dark side because bonding for the most part, for at least 50% of those bonded, it is a form of enslavement. Not self relationships are abusive relationships and whether they are abusive because there is no truth in them or they are abusive mentally or physically, that it is one of the commonalities of the pair bond. After all, the vast majority of human beings and pair bonds have deep, deep problems within the bond itself. They do. And whether they deal with it or not, because what you're looking at in the four is is where the, and it's interesting because I see it as an evolution, when you're looking at the 49 and the 30, this is pure raw impulse. But when you're looking at the four, it's very calculated. And for me, this is the history of arranged marriage. This is the calculation. And it is a calculation that in essence leads to abuse. The 29 one. So it's very interesting. These are the kinds of people that when the sun goes into the fourth gate, you have all these people going online through dating services. It suddenly becomes an urge in them. And it's kind of an attempt logically to be able to get a reasonable ra relationship. And of course, all of this is about the readiness to make a commitment. And of course, when we're dealing with the 29th gate, again, we're staying with the collective theme in the four and the 29. Of course, in the 29, we're going to be dealing with the one. And this is the drafty. Well, dear, you're getting on, you know, you should really have a partner. This is the drafty. This is where all that arranged marriage stuff began, which eventually gets formalized because, of course, what you can see is all of this is leading back to the tribe and the tribe says, excuse me, we're going to formalize this. These are the arranged marriages. These are the bonds that can only exist between a certain group, a certain class, a certain race, a certain religion. And this is all the calculating, well, this is the best you're going to get, so you might as well take it. And after all, you're going to enjoy some adventures from it because guess what? You're going to be able to have your sexual adventures and get to live out your sexual identity. This is marriage as the sex trap. And it's not in the favor of women. It isn't. The reality for me is that the deeper I go into the form principle, the more I realize the enormous no-choice sacrifice that female kind makes in its very existence for everything to be possible. And they get a lousy deal. They really do. They get just a lousy deal. And when you're looking at this particular theme, you can see very clearly that this is where you see the enslavement of the female persona, the enslavement in the bonded relationship. Okay, I guess um, that's it so far. There's some more text, but um, I think the essence is spoken out about this crazy mating season that is a drive for us, that is a drive, and uh, it's two times uh, here in this rave mandala, and uh, some dark sides to it. And I hope you enjoyed. Have a nice Valentine's Day, even though the text wasn't that nice and fluffy. <laughs>